Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, everybody, to N5D Radio's Cosmic Awakening Show, where we are serving this galaxy and beyond. My name is Michelle Walling, and I'll be your host for the next few hours. And in case this is your first time with us, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm a certified holistic life coach, author, guest writer, and admin for N5D.com, and webmaster of CosmicStarseeds.com and MichelleWalling.com. And joining me today is my Pleiadian Disco co-host and Pleiadian Facebook group wizard, Rockin' Larry Lockin. Hey, Larry. Hey, Michelle. How's it going tonight? It's going fabuloso. How are yeah, you? Yeah, I agree. I'm excited about tonight's show. I can't wait to get a reading, and I can't wait to hear what the callers have to say, and I'm just excited to get going, you know? It's going to be awesome. I am Psychic shows, um, we, we've done one before. They're, one, they're some mm-hmm. of my favorite um, um, topics because it's it's truly wonderful when you can uh, meet somebody who has developed their sixth sense ability to help other people. Yeah, there's always that excitement, too. You never know quite where it's going to go. And, yeah, it's it, it's always exciting. And, I, yeah, and tonight's no different for sure. I can't wait to see what happens. Well, I would say that you never know where our show is going to go anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's for sure. Always excited, never a dull yeah. moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd like, to, I'd like to give a very special thanks to our sponsor, Greg Prescott, our radio show host at N5D Radio that makes this show possible. Greg is also the webmaster for N5D.com, the world's hottest esoteric, metaphysical, and spiritual database on the Internet with almost 900,000 visitors each month. N5D.com is ranked in the top 25,000 websites in the world. Greg's other websites are BodyMindSoulSpirit.com and HolisticCancerResearch.com. And I'd like wow, that's to give, incredible. <laughs> I'd like to get... Uh, have you ever been on BodyMindSoulSpirit.com? You know, I have, yeah, I have, I have actually checked it out a few times, yes, but I have not I been there a whole lot. No, no, it's no, it's okay. <laughs> but, but you can actually, bet now I will. It's awesome because um, Greg posts a new article every day on N5D, but he also posts mm-hmm. one on BodyMindSoulSpirit.com. And some of your um, newly awakened friends who aren't quite into, you know, the deep, um, the deep esoteric. Um, you know, may may be able to uh, like and share the body, mind, soul, spirit information a little easier because it's really um, holistic health, alternative health, and a little bit of woo woo, but not too not too in your face. There's some really really important good information on there, and it's really um, it's it's really doing very well as as far as readership goes, and I'm very proud of that of that website because. You know, you need all all different levels of information for people today. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I I can think of some people off the top of my head that would really like would really enjoy that and I'm going to turn them on to it. So, I'm glad you mentioned it. Well, I would like to give a special shout out to our Facebook friends, our Facebook groups, and our cosmic family out in the universe listening tonight. Um I have a Facebook group that um, is called Sensing Vibes Spiritual Awakenings Group with over 12,000 members, and this is right up their alley. I did post on that wall today about our show, so if anybody's listening for that from that group, a special shout out to you. Um, their description says, spiritual and psychic groups where like-minded people can share projects, experiences, and events with people around the world. Sharing is caring and love and light. So I want to say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hey, chat room. Hey, chat room, room people. 
If you have any questions for our guest, Larry or myself, and you're too, just too shy to call in, <laughs> type it in the chat room if you have any questions, and we'll um, we'll try to get an answer for you. Um, as you know, Larry, this week's topic is psychic healing. A little later, we'll be bringing on our very special guest, Cindy Staffen. Our call-in number is area code 646-716-8890. And, Larry, we did have that wonderful show on uh, that psychic show before, but have you ever had any other psychic readings from a professional? You know what? No, I have not. And it's actually one of the top two or three things that I would like to have done at one point in my life. I mean, other than a past life regression, I can't think of anything else that, honestly, at this point, I would really like to have done. Yeah, well, you'll get to do that today, although we'll probably spend about, you know, ten minutes on that. And um, usually, I think when Cindy does readings, they could be like up to an hour or more, Um but, you know, we've always heard on the spiritual path to go within that all the answers can be found there. So, you know, why would we want to consult a psychic on the spiritual path? And my answer to that is, you know, they can provide like a bridge to kind of get you going in the right direction um, if you if they c- can communicate with your guides or if they can read your Akashic record. You know, to kind of put you back on, um, if you're having any questions and you're frustrated and you're just wondering what, you know, what am I supposed to be doing here? Sometimes if you, you know, the psychics, depending on what kind of psychic they are, um, they can help you with that. They, um, in this case, um, psychic healing, Cindy's going to be talking about how um, she mixes, mix, mixes her psychic abilities with being able to see energies and heal. And she's also going to talk about how she has healed herself. And if you actually consult um, a psychic medium, someone like John Edward or John Holland, uh, someone of that caliber, um, you can get healing from the loss of a loved one that way. And that kind of helps you move on because, you know, when we have grief, that energy can be stuck in our emotional field. And as we are trying to move forward um, with our spiritual journey and raising our vibration in our body, um, you know, we, it helps to be able to consult a professional uh, when it comes to things like stuck energy. Um, Let's see. Discernment ultimately is the key. Um, How does, in, in discernment, you know, when you're having a reading with anyone, You want to kind of feel, how does it sound to you? And it's different for everybody um, how you discern. It's a practice that you really have to to work with. And for me, I've talked to you about this before, Larry, if -hmm. something really rings true to me, it's like a gong going off in my body. Exactly. It's validation. Yeah, it's like that aha moment validation, you know. Right. The energy will flow up and down the left side of my body, my legs, down uh, sometimes from my torso all the way down to my foot and all the way back up. Um, So I've noticed um, in in my practice that that has really, uh, that something really resonates with my my heart when that happens. And the way that that works is our heart, you know, is electromagnetic, electromagnet energy. It's made of source energy that, you know, it's what makes our heart beat, what makes us take breath, what, you know, makes our lungs move the oxygen through our bodies, through air. And so basically the electromagnetic energy um, sends um, the signals um, from, it, it basically is a conductor from our emotional side to our body and so we can learn to um, feel the clues in our body based on our heart's response that's the best way I can put it and Michelle doesn't that provide an energy field kind of around you like in maybe in a nine foot radius if I'm not mistaking as well I mean that covers that kind of mm-hmm. covers your whole aura as well yeah that's what I thought Fascinating. yeah you know the the aura is made up of the the mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies around the physical body, 
But your aura, your energy field, um, can also be uh, much bigger than than that than just that because um, you know if you start bringing more light into your body, you can definitely grow your aura. I mean, you can even imagine your aura encompassing the earth because you know we're unlimited spiritual beings. So you could, you know, go all the way out to the universe and beyond if you want with your aura. But most of the time, it's practical to keep your aura uh, more if you're not doing healing for the earth or, you know, trying to um, send out energy. It's prob- it's more practical to keep it, you know, around closer to your body. So, yeah. Something to and, keep in mind, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I wrote an article called How to Refine Your Psychic Powers. Um, you can find that on n5d.com, and in it, I review some of the types of psychic abilities, and I'd like to discuss them briefly. First of all, there is um, ESP, which is extrasensory perception, the ability to know information beyond the five senses, like just knowing who's going to call on the phone or hearing a song in your head. And then turning the radio on, you know, and that very song is playing. And we talked about this the last time we had a psychic show. You know, get in the car, turn the car on, there's the song on the radio. Or you go walk, get out of the car, walk into the grocery store, and the same song's playing. It's like, whoa. Exactly. <laughs> that, and we, we had mentioned that's been happening to both of us, you know, more and more. So, mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. And then we have telepathy, which is a form of ESP involving sending conscious communication to another person without speaking. And a lot of the extra-dimensional or extraterrestrial beings uh, communicate that way because the English language was really created to limit us. Yes, they do. I know my guides. My gu- yeah, my guides do that, too. And it, it's really because, you know, the English language, language period out of the mouth really limits us. And it's all-knowing and, you know, all pure consciousness mm-hmm. when it comes from that form. Right. Uh, clear audience is the clear hearing um, where you can hear tones, voices, uh, or music, or, um, yeah, tones, voices, or music. Clear sentience is clear sensing or feeling energy and, and intuition. And I think this is the most common form of a sixth sensibility is the feeling, you know, just feeling something's right or not right. Um, and and oh, learning sure. how to follow that feeling is is one of the most um, important parts of uh, or examples of discernment. We have um, clairvoyance, which is clear seeing, including the auras that you were talking about and other spirits, or by seeing movies and symbols, which could be geometric patterns in the third eye area, which is basically like your imagination in a way. Psychometry is the ability to pick up thoughts or events from an object, and some psychics use um, that uh, honing in ability to help police, uh, you know, find missing people. Prophecy or precognition is the ability to know something is going to happen before it happens, including precognition dreams. Telekinesis is using the mind to move objects. And channeling is connecting with your higher self or other spirits or consciousness and bringing information through words, sentences, sentences, automatic writing, pictures, and movies, etc. And, you know, the biggest field that we need to use discernment in is channeling because, um, you know, anything that you're channeling other than your higher self, you've really got to, to learn uh, discernment. It's not that you can't pay attention or read those kinds of things, or believe those kinds of things. It's just that, you know, if it makes you feel good, great, and you want to read it, that's great. And if there's something that's kind of funky about it, then you might just want to move on to something else. Yeah, there's never a shortage of controversy, is there, in the, in the starseed realm as far as channeling goes, is there, in discernment. You know, it seems like we we talk about it on other shows, too, where it's not even really the topic, and it, it comes up, and it comes up in the group. So, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. So everyone has the capability to use their sixth sense. And in order to refine your psychic powers, our guest Cindy had this to say, you are a multidimensional being of light awakened now on the planet. You came into this life with the abilities that you are discovering or remembering, and there will be more as you evolve. 
Take the time to adapt to them and work through any fears that may arise. Claim your divinity and walk with your head high, your heart open, and reach out to everyone that needs help along the way. So with that being said, I think now is a good time to bring on our guest, Larry. Would you like to introduce Cindy? I sure would. Uh, I'm having a technical difficulty <laughs> here. It's been one of those okay. days. Okay. I've got her up right here. And I'll sing some elevator um, music. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm, yeah, um, Thinking now my computer's rain. freezing up on me, but, um. That's okay, I'll do it. Okay. I got it. You, I got your back, dude. You, you, you got my back here? Um. Yeah, I got your back. I read your other part. Oh, I've too. got I it. Nope. I, well. I've, I've, <laughs> I have got it. I definitely, I've got it right here. And I would just okay. like to say that, um. Cindy has enhanced her abilities through years by studying with several mentors attending seminars, workshops, reading her best-selling self-improvement books, and from receiving treatments herself. Her passion for helping others has led her to become certified in several modalities. She is a Reiki master and a teacher, intuitive spiritual counselor, psychic healer, pineal gland activator. Cindy's psychic readings are focused on helping people overcome obstacles and make the choices that benefit them the most. Topics that are addressed are health, family, finances, relationships, careers, and spirituality. Her abilities as a medium are helpful to anyone who is grieving the loss of a loved one, as well as those who are curious about the afterlife. And, of course, you can reach Cindy on her website at www.essentialawakenings.com and on her Facebook page, Cindy Staffan. That's C-I-N-D-Y-S-T-A-F-F-I-N, Staffin, S-T-A-F-F-I-N. Welcome to the show, Cindy. Hi. Hey, Cindy. Oh, I'm glad to be here. And, Larry, I've been having technical difficulties all day, so don't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, everything I've touched today, I'm like, oh, well, we'll just move on. So thank you for having me on. This is so much fun. It is, and thank you for being here. Um, I know that you <clears throat> that you are um, that you like to go to bed early. I mean, go to bed early and get up early, right? Yeah. Well, listen, I'm I'm Thursday. Thursdays are my long days. That's why any other night I could party all night with you guys. So, but Thursday's <laughs> tough for me. But I'm here um, and I'm excited. Well, we are we are too, and I'm going to take you back into the past. To describe to our listeners how <laughs> you operate and how we met. I met you in Oneonta, New York, last Christmas. Um, I was led there through the shop next door, and you and I had never met before. Um, I, we were we were looking around, and um, uh, I was like, "Do you do you know where I could get um, like a reading?" Because I like to get readings in every town that I'm in. It just so happens that you were right next door. And um, we ended up uncovering during our reading that you lived in my hometown of Fort Worth, Texas, from 1976 to 2001, (laughs) where I grew up. And not only that, but you were in the wholesale florist business, and my family owned a flower shop in downtown Fort Worth. And we used that florist, that wholesaler. So yeah, and I have the account. <laughs> yes. Now, Greens and Things Florist was the name of it, and um, my grandmother owned the shop. My mother worked there. My aunt worked there. My great-grandmother worked there. So every day that I was able to go during the summer and work there, um, I was calling in. You know, we'd run out of carnations or roses or whatever, and I, we just dial up the speed dial and order it, and you guys would have it right out to us. So... Yeah, there's no coincidences in life, and so I have to say that was um, a pretty that was not only a pretty good um, memory for me and confirmation for me that you know you're the real deal. But uh, we're going to talk about my reading because that was amazing. Um, you had no idea of anything about me, and during the reading, you asked me if I was a writer. 
I mean, I didn't tell you anything. I didn't give you any clues. I just sat down and you're like, are you a writer? And I said, yeah. Then when you asked me what I wrote, I shared my connection with N5D and Greg. And you were just laughing because you're like, I've even read your articles. I've been on N5D. So that was kind of funny. And I know that it kind of was funny for you because here you were unsuspecting, you know, a couple of days before Christmas and I walk in your door. (laughs) And you know what's even funnier? I had a 2.30 appointment and he called and canceled. Ten minutes later, you walk in the door and you said, (laughs) can I get a reading? I said, can you come at 2.30? And you said, yeah. And I was like, oh, boy, here we go. Because, Michelle, when you walked in the door, I'm like, who is this beam of light walking in my door? (laughs) Really? I was just like, who is this woman? (laughs) Well, we found out, didn't we? (laughs) (laughs) I think Spirit was synchronizing everything very carefully so we could hook up. And I remember I've been thinking about your reading, and I remember bits and pieces, and I even got a little emotional at one point just thinking about it. So... Aww. You're a very special person, so I, um, yeah, I'm glad here, that you're definitely. here doing this work, so thank you. Well, I've had several readings. Like I said, every chance I get, and not only do I like to support people who are helping other people, but there's always one little piece of the clue that my guides and angels seem to want to to give to me a little at a time. It's like spoon-feeding a baby. Uh, But what I liked about your reading is that you're able to see timelines and graphs. You do a lot of your readings with your eyes closed. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what you see when you close your eyes and how you see timelines and graphs? You know, it's interesting. A lot of times I just naturally close my eyes. I don't necessarily do it on purpose, but um, I can just see more with my eyes closed. I see other than the third dimension with my eyes closed. So I'm able to, sometimes I see a chart, sometimes I will follow a stream of energy, and then usually in front of me, when the time is right, it happens. It's like like a yardstick on my desk, but there are years instead of inches. And whatever I'm talking to my client about at the time, a number will light up. And I know that that's where the source of this fear or whatever, if it's a negative emotion, that that age is probably when it started. And we just go back there and kind of work through things. And I just bring them forward to the, to the mm-hmm. present moment. And a lot of them are able to release. And even in realizing the source of an emotion is is enough to completely heal them. Well, I just find that absolutely fascinating because there are not very many people that I've had readings with that could actually put things into such a number perspective as you have. And, of course, all timelines are malleable. And things can change, Um, like, you know, being able to know that something is coming up that you talk about, you know, in my head, I can make the decision, well, perhaps I don't want that to happen, and I can at least know that I can um, make take the steps to keep something from going a certain way, Um, Mm -hmm. if, of course, that's on the highest, if that's on my highest path. But in the reading... You also saw a car accident, and oddly enough, it was um, the one where my sister was thrown out of a vehicle almost exactly one year today. It's actually happened July 4th of last year. You came up with the K, the K sound for her first name, which was extremely close. Um, Her name is Christy. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I knew right off the bat, you know... um, that that was tied to her, and so that was just so, it just flowed. So it's just, you just have the most amazing ability. You described her injuries to the head and exactly where she hit her head exiting the vehicle. And then my father, who has passed, came forth at that time and gave me a message that my sister is just fine and that she had no permanent damage. So it was great 
uh, for me, I have my father has come forth many times in a lot of different readings. He came forth during a workshop that I had uh, taken to uh, learn how to speak, uh, how to take messages for people like you do. And I, I at the time just really uh, wasn't very good at it. But my grandmother, which is his mother, came forth to tell me, "Oh, honey." You didn't come here to learn how to take messages. You came here so your father could talk to you and we could help him out. So, you know, that's where you get expectations here. I thought I was going to this week-long conference to learn how to do what you do, but that's really not my specialty, and I really needed to help my father get to the right place on the other side. Oh, that's awesome. So you can also communicate with beings that just pop in to give you messages once you really get in your flow. Um, What kind of protection do you put up before you start a session? Well, I always ground myself, um, always wash my hands. You know, when you wash your hands, it grounds you, burn a little sage. And I work with Archangel Michael, so he's my protection. I also work with the Ascended Masters, and it's, it's usually appropriate to whatever my client's needs are during their session. Michael is okay. almost always with me. So, and then other beings will come in, and a lot of times off-world beings also come in. Mm-hmm. So we're yeah. just pretty much she open to everything. I'm sorry. I said we had a lot of that going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you also used crystals and switched back and forth to grounding crystals and then you'd put that one down and you'd get another crystal that kind of took you out there. Can you explain um, how that worked? Yeah, I have a smoky quartz, which is my favorite, and um, I have it in my hand right now. (laughs) So it it does ground me. It helps me stay focused. I'm a fly baby. You know, I like to fly, so I really have to make sure I stay grounded during readings. Once I establish a connection, I call it once we're riding the wave, I like to switch to a double terminated um, quartz that's actually a Michael crystal. I got this from Rana Herman, and it's infused with Michael's energy. And that's when I pick up that clear quartz, that's when we really fly. So, yeah, and I also have a pretty, since you've been here, I've got a really nice rose quartz pillow from Madagascar that's gorgeous, and I end up usually handing that to my client (laughs) if they're a little emotional Mm -hmm. or whatever, and I have other crystals that I will hand people to hold or give them during their session, too. Mm -hmm. Well, I I love crystals, and I think they're great energy amplifiers and receivers, and I think that they're able to, uh, that they all hold records and that they're able Mm -hmm. to Uh, uh, store records or even help tap into someone else's Akashic record as well. But mostly it's probably, I would guess, um, for for amplification or being able to receive, like um, almost like a communication device for you, isn't it? Right, especially in mediumship work. Um, You know, spirits don't necessarily have the energy it takes to communicate with us. So we have to amp up our energy to reach them. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so that's, I, I can. Mm-hmm. And that's usually when I pick up my uh, my quartz, where I can just mm-hmm. you know relax and let it go and amp up my own energy. Is that so we can step up to their vibration, like? come up to their vibration, Cindy, you know, because I know that they're probably in a higher, you know, higher dimension than we are. And so is that, does that help ramp it up so, you know, we can kind of meet them on their level? I guess that's what I'm asking. In a sense, yes, Larry, but we actually give them the energy to communicate. Oh, okay. I mean, I always describe it as they come down, we go up, and we meet in a bandwidth. Ah. A bandwidth of energy. So, and maybe it is that we have to ground them a little bit. I'm not really sure on the specifics other than I know that I connect because I give them the energy. And oftentimes during a session, somebody will just come in 
And other times I always say, well, let's give them a call. I have to call them up. They're not showing up here. And when I know their name, it's usually pretty easy for me to connect with them. So when I do that, I'm calling them by name. I'm literally calling them. And that and so it cool. gives them the energy to talk to me. Wow, that's fascinating. I've never heard it put that way before, but that certainly makes sense. I'm glad you explained that. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, it gets better. Then you did a chakra scan on me, which is one of the <laughs> services that you do. And you tuned into each one of my chakras, starting with the base chakra, and you pretty much found that they were that they were wide open and spinning um, the correct direction. Each chakra um, told a story, and as you moved up, you you just knew that I had a hysterectomy. I mean, that's I just find that fascinating and amazing. You described uh, my heart chakra as a big, beautiful space with windows all around, and then you said, like a round spaceship. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, you know, is there any hint to that as as to how we'll be moving out of this reality? Um, If your heart is a spaceship or your heart chakra or your heart center, you know, the power of your being as being a spark from creator, I mean, that's a pretty good hint to me. I I really appreciate that information that you sent forth to me because confirmation, um, you know, when you're using your imagination and talking about things, it's just really great to have confirmation along your spiritual path. The heart space is basically the portal for each person and is the one place that we cannot be interfered with, period. And so that's why going within your heart is so important when you really want to uh, have confirmation. Right. Then, then you asked me if I hear voices or a tone, a tone, and I had had a vibrational hum appear in my head since I began my awakening in 2010, and I made a pledge to service to serve others back then and to change the perceived reality I am in. Um, and that's when the tone started in my head. So you said that when I heard when I heard that, that it was a transmission of information, either a download or an upload, that basically it was a communication. And um, my vibration is raised when that happens. And I was wondering if... if I don't expect you to tune in to me. I've already had my reading, but if you could use your intuition, what? where do you think that is coming from, though? Where do you think that tone is coming from? Well, I believe it's coming from another dimension, and it's, it's what it makes your ear do. <laughs> you know, it's your physical mm-hmm. reaction to mm-hmm. a higher consciousness. Mm-hmm. So it could be my higher self sending me or it could be an aspect of myself on a ship or on even higher than that in the Christ consciousness uh, level or whatever, sending sending me sound and it's being understood by my ears. Do you think that's kind of like what it is? Sure. It could be like a code, you know, a frequency mm-hmm. of information. Mm-hmm. And if you broke it down, it would probably would be different tones and mm-hmm. different with different meanings. Well, I can say that it's very harmonic. Um, mm. Like when I try to pinpoint it down to hum exactly the tone. I mean, there's there's a high there's high, medium, and low levels of octave, and it goes even further than that. It's almost like I can't even pinpoint the the level that it's at but i do know that over time it started as a morse code over time it has gotten almost constant with no breaks in between and it has gone from a very low harmonic tone to a i would say a middle octave to- tone overall um but and it's not it's now in the back of my mind like it's quiet rather than as loud when it first started and the reason i mention this is because i know people now who are hearing um these tones and 
they're of a very high octave and they're very loud. So mm-hmm. that, yeah, sometimes we try to overanalyze these tones or whatever, but I was just curious as to, you know, and I'm not asking you to answer this, but it, I just wanted to put it out to everybody if you're experiencing this. I was just curious as to, like, now why it's it's soft instead of the loud. You know, maybe I have adjusted to the to the tone itself. I don't know. Well, you know, Michelle, Michelle, years ago, Barbara Han Cloud mentioned that in the Pleiadian Agenda, that it, it started like that with her with Morris Code, and then it got it changed, and it got clearer and clearer as time went on, and you know, maybe it's just part of bridging that gap, you know, building that bridge to understanding it clearer and clearer. You know, that could be, too. Mm-hmm. And as you were yeah. talking, Michelle, I was just getting that these frequencies, these tones, it's like going to the gas station to put fuel in your car. You're you're receiving energy as well. Mm-hmm. It's, it's vibrating. It's a vibration entering your body. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Michelle, if I can say, you just don't talk to one alien race. Mm-hmm. You're involved with several. So mm-hmm. maybe that's why the tones change. Yeah. It makes it makes different languages. Sense. Yay. Thank you so much. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Because, you know, I, I am part of the Pleiadian groups with Larry, and I feel a connection to the Octurians and, you know, the Galerians, and I just feel like I've been all over. So that that is the requirement that I needed to be able to speak with um, anybody, you know, anybody on the radio or be able to, um, for my voice, to have the codes to be able to resonate with um, just about anybody I needed that experience of either the experience of being everywhere or the uh, um the codes that were that are downloading to me from all of those races so I can so that makes perfect sense thank you for that you're welcome um yeah and if um if all all of that wasn't enough to make me just thrilled during our reading then you asked me if I saw ships spaceships <laughs> and then specifically do they flash colors at me? Well, uh, yeah. Back in October or November, I believe, of last year, I saw um, one of my first ships, and it was with Greg out here in Sarasota, Florida, in the western sky, and he took video of it. They pretty much called him to go out there and start videotaping these ships as evidence, and we do have that posted on N5D, I believe under the UFO or ET section. So I was very impressed with that. Um, And I know that uh, Larry has has ships outside of his house as well that communicate with him. So this is all just like, yeah, soul family coming together, you know. Um, Right. When we got on the subject of Greg, um, I remember you were so surprised at my answer to this question. You said, so how long have you and Greg been together? And it had only been a couple of months. And you were like, I thought it was years and years and years. And then you kind of followed the thread back to many lifetimes that we had together. So that's also something in your in your service to people that you can help them with, that they're having um, – if they have questions about a relationship or or whatever, you know, being able for spirit to be able to give you that information, it's just great confirmation that you're on the right track. Um, you also yes. picked up the number of times that he had been married, exactly, which is twice. I don't mind telling everybody out there. It's really strange. He and I have both been married twice. Me too. Then, I about fell out of my chair. Yeah, yeah, you too, Larry. I know. We, Greg and I have mentioned that before. But then I about fell out of my chair when you said, when you called my ex husband's name out, who, who had just died that year. Aww. And you said, you said his name, who is blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh my gosh. You know, it is, there are, <laughs> I mean, you know, I've seen psychic. Um, medium Teresa Caputo on television, and and she does pretty good at names, but most of the time, names are one of the hardest thing things for psychics to just call out. But you just do it like it's no big deal. 
Um, and he came forth to say that he knew Greg, like their buddy buddy on the other side. Like before, before. So that was a real trip. So um, you said that I was way ahead of my time in a time. Okay, you. I was way ahead of my time in a place that time and space does not support me. And that was personal information for me to know that, you know, I am not like the rest of the people that are around me. And and I knew that I was on a really, you know, a really strong spiritual path. But for you to, to say that really struck me as the truth. And so I was, that really helped me out a whole lot. And you just have so much to offer people. You said that I would get propelled like I would get propellers. <laughs> and, and I think that's kind of like how I feel when when the time comes to where we become light bodies and we're able to fly, you know. I feel like that that's, you know, a message that spirit needed, that I needed to hear. These are just the fun things that come up in, in readings. And finally, you gave me a quote from Spirit to close out my session that I absolutely loved. We're going to get to some callers here in a minute. And you said, when things get dense, be your spirit sense. Rise up and look down on it. And I'm getting chills right now just through my body. Uh, I have always felt that sometimes in order to deal with as you as you confirmed, I have a hard time being here, and sometimes the only way I can really get through things is to pull myself back like I'm up on the upper balcony um, of a theater watching this play unfold in front of me. You know, I need to sometimes be down in there and be the actor and make things happen, and sometimes I just need to pull back out of the denseness, and so I, I thought that was a very profound statement. And um, I have to say, it was one of the most accurate, helpful, and fun readings that I've ever had. And so I oh, thank, thank you for you. that. I, I just wanted to give our our um, our audience um, a chance to to experience um, my firsthand confirmation because you always want to check out, you know, get, you know, um, well, I can't say always. I was going to say you always got to check out and get some references for psychics. And be sure that you go to a reputable psychic because there are people out there that are just trying to take care, take advantage of people to, to get their money. But in my case, um, I, I haven't run across that very often. It always seems like spirit has guided me exactly where I needed to be. So, um, you mean you're not, calling nine, you know, you're not calling 900 numbers <laughs> late at night from the information? <laughs> <laughs> well, I may be calling the 900 numbers, but they're not psychic. <laughs> no. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cindy, I was wondering if you could share a little bit about um, who your teachers were and the, the, the modalities that, you, that you've learned. Sure. Um well, Rana Herman, first of all, I'm sure you know Rana Herman. Yes, I'm very yes. familiar with her. She's a messenger for Archangel Michael. She's lovely. She's in Reno. And um, her monthly messages, and I've been to her seminars, and I've taken the Michael Oath, and it's very, very mm-hmm. powerful. And um, she even called me one time. I was shocked. And I told her, I said, this is like a, well, because I had emailed her. And um, to me, that was like a movie star calling me, which she thought was hysterical. <laughs> and um, Steve Rother of Lightworker.com. Are mm-hmm. you familiar with the Rothers? I am. He, he um, has some channeled material in the Sedona magazine, doesn't he? Yeah, the group, probably. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the group. Um, yeah, and I, I love their teachings, and I took spiritual psychology with them, inverse wave therapy, the pineal gland activation classes. But, you know, when I walk into, they're usually, I go in Toronto, and by myself, and you walk into a room of 70 or 80 people, and you feel like you know every one of them. It's like the ultimate retreat for me. It's just like being home and... It's awesome, and their information is awesome, too. 
And um, Dr. Meg Blackburn. Do you know mm -hmm. her? Meg, no, I've not heard of her. Oh, Dr. Uh, Meg Blackburn Losey now is her last name, too. She's very galactic, um, awesome healer. She takes people to groups to Machu Picchu and the pyramids and all over. Mm -hmm. And let me see who else. I trained with Eric Pearl in the Reconnection. I don't know, Reconnective Healing. Okay. I've not heard that, of um, Eric. That healing modality is awesome. It's He calls it Reiki on steroids, and he's right. <laughs> It's really, really awesome. So you really do hands-on awesome. healing if you, if you, if like if you're doing a chakra scan, you can either do um, like a psychic healing where you just basically dissolve the energy, or do you, or can you also do that? Um, um, do you just actually lay your hands on somebody, or I don't do, anymore. I you... work in the energy field, mm -hmm. with, and that's where I'm most comfortable. You know, when mm -hmm. I when I do Reiki. I do everything. It's like when somebody mm -hmm. comes into my office for healing, it's whatever comes through me or whatever's mm -hmm. best for them, I should say. Mm -hmm. But the psychic healing is something that I just naturally do. It just comes mm -hmm. through me. And for an example, a friend of mine um, had pain in her hip for several years. So I can just kind of, I just went into her hip and I saw this, hairline fracture and with light I just kind of sewed it you know just kind of like sewed it up like you would a wound and That's to this day amazing. as far as I know it hasn't hurt her since Cindy Michelle had mentioned to me that you performed a self-healing on yourself can you tell us a little bit about that yes it was um, actually it was 11 years ago this month, 4th of July, and oh my God, I, it's synchronicity, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to, um, I was at the fireworks, and it was in a rural place, so there's no bathrooms, <laughs> and I had to use the bathroom, so I had to go in the woods, and I fell, and I started rolling towards the water, it was actually a drop-off. And I could just hear my knee just, it was like just getting shot. I thought, oh, my God, I just blew my knee out. Then all of a sudden I was rolling uphill. This was all very slow and surreal, of course. And I heard a click, 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 and I thought, oh, man, I just broke my ankle in three places. So as soon as I stopped and I called up the hill to my mother to go get help, I immediately put my hands up and just started saying, back in time, back in time, back in time, back in time. And it was getting dark. I had to pull myself up this hill, and an ambulance came for me. And um, the whole time, I just kept, at that point, silently, because there was all these people around me, but I just kept saying, back in time, back in time, back in time. So then I go to the emergency room, and they put a cast on my leg. And a few days later, I go to the orthopedic surgeon, and he put the slide in the lights. And he looked at me, and he looked back at the slide, and he looked at me, and I thought, oh, gosh, what's he going to say? Mm -hmm. And he said, when did you do this? And I said, three days ago. And he said, oh, you broke your ankle in three places. They're perfectly aligned and have started healing like they've been healing for a while. Wow. And I said, well, what about my knee? And he said, there's nothing wrong with your knee. So I know <laughs> had I had more time, I probably would have finished healing my ankle. But mm -hmm. the doctor was amazed. He I said, bet it that looks really like it's already been set. Bit. Yeah, wow. So I love the back in time thing because, as we know, cells have memory and they can remember mm -hmm. what it was like to be well, especially if it was just a few minutes ago. So I encourage people to do that. Like if you get a burn or if you, you know, break a bone or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like that the, um, 
that everyone has the ability to heal themselves, and apparently you um, needed to, unfortunately, have that experience to be able to have the, to do it yourself and have the story to prove. You know, somebody's always got to go in front of us, you know, to show us that these things are possible. Uh, because it does involve a lot of imagination, and it involves um, really believing in your heart that you have the ability to do that to yourself. I just right. find that absolutely um, fascinating, and um, I, I just can't stress to our listeners how uh, how important it is that you're sharing this information with everybody, because uh, we do have a you know we do have a pretty broad audience and. It's important for everybody to know that this is possible. And um, so what I was wanting to do for the rest of the show, Cindy, is um, unless there's something else that you wanted to talk about, um, I wanted to see if you would mind doing a mini reading for my co-host, Larry, and then we'll take some callers. And callers, um, if you get your questions ready, the call-in number is 646-716-8890. And um, I think the way Cindy wants to handle the callers is if you would just think of a question or two that you really, really feel like you need help with, she'll be able to tune in that way. But for Larry, um, you know, I'd say, you know, go for it. We could have like five or ten full minutes of just spouting it out if you'd like. Okay, yeah, I that sounds good. Thank you, real quick, Cindy. You truly are a pioneer. That's amazing, and I really appreciate having you on the show. And I'm kind of excited right now. So, yeah, um, however you want to do it is fine with me. Okay. So, as Michelle was talking, Larry, um, mm-hmm. are you older than 37? Yes. So, 37 popped right up when she was talking. Was that a year that something special happened in your life? Well, actually, I got my last divorce uh, the year I was 37. Um, okay. All other right. than that, nothing too special now. <laughs> well, that was pretty special because yeah, actually it was, it like was. A, a total rebirth for you. You know what? Yes, that's true. No, that is true. Yeah. Now, did you feel like the whole thing was your fault or your responsibility? Yes. Because that was a huge, I'm so glad that you felt that because you resolved that. You might have carried that energy throughout your life up until that point, and that lesson sealed the deal for you. So you don't, I hope you don't still have, feel responsible for things that are not in your control anymore. Just finally in the last few months have I gotten there, you know, and I mean, I couldn't control the fact that I had this awakening, and that's kind of what set it in motion, and I blamed, you know, I blamed myself for having that awakening back then, but it's just been, Cindy, in the last few months where I've really kind of began to totally let that go, actually. Yeah, but you haven't taken on any more. No. Good. All right, so let me see. Um, so I have somebody in spirit coming in, but they're coming in kind of sideways, and that kind of tells me this seems to be on your mom's side. Was, was there a death recently in your mother's family? Um, both my grandparents, yeah, my grandmother actually passed away about three years ago, and, um, you know, I was really close with her, and there was kind of some unresolved issues between my mom and her. They never really got along. Um, just something I can't quite put my finger on, but right. yeah, but it's been a few years, yes. Okay. She, was she a stubborn woman? Oh, man, yes. Yeah, bless her heart. She's still, um, we're going to energize her a little bit. Michael's going to help her out. You know, in the afterlife, there's all these levels, but she's so stubborn. She, she just wants to hold on. Yes. Um, I wouldn't doubt if she, your mother thinks she haunts her. Yes. <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't be surprised either. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, I get an M name around your grandmother. What was her name? Um, Her middle name was Marie. Her name was uh, okay. Doris Marie Chase. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Marie was actually the name I was picking up on. She was named after somebody, I think. All right, so we're going to help her out. Let me see. Moving forward for you, you know, here in a couple months, Larry, you're going to start a new cycle. So fasten your seatbelt. Okay. 
you're gonna you're gonna be blasted <laughs> off here. So I'm sorry. Were you gonna say something? I was just gonna say, is that a good or a bad thing? Blasting? Well, yeah. It's a good mm-hmm. thing. Okay. Everything's good. <laughs> Everything's good. People are afraid to get readings sometimes because they think I'm gonna tell them something bad, but I don't think there's bad things. Because there's a solution to everything. There's a way out, and that's that's the gift. No, I'm just excited to hear this. You know, yeah, of course, there's always the nerves, but, yeah, I'm just really excited for the future. And, yeah, anyway. Yeah, so this cycle coming up, this last cycle that you had looked like a short one, looked like four years. So, like, in 2010 to now was probably that huge roller coaster ride. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it stopped at all for you, so it's going to slow down now. But you're going to take advantage of everything you've learned and you've experienced, and you're going to apply it big time. So um, this is a, this is going to help you financially too. You're just going to be attracting more what you might consider to be abundance in your life. It doesn't have to be money. But I think you've got more joy coming. Are you married? Are you with somebody? No. No, I'm not. No. Okay. Nope. Well, within three years, I see that happening. Hmm. So what is this? Okay, so it would be like 2017. You mean as far as another, like a, a, a serious relationship? Well, one that you enjoy. Okay. Let's put it that way. You know, serious, you know. (laughs) It's a relative term, (laughs) yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, this will be enjoyable. So you have all of these nice things coming in. I even see, like, flowers. And that's just telling me it's joyful. It's rewarding. Wow. So... I nice see change, a lot of nines yeah. in here. That's a nice high frequency. Do you do healing work at all? Um, you mean on on myself or for other people? Both. Either one. Um, I, you know, I meditate fairly often, but as far as healing other people, I don't know. I give a lot of people a lot of advice, and I just it just seems like my energy being around them helps them. Yeah. But I don't do anything per se. Um, Routine, I guess it would put it. Well, your words are very healing, too. It doesn't have necessarily have to okay. be defined by a modality. But you've got this vibration of nine coming in around you. So I bet you see threes all, all over the place, do you? All the time. It was 20, it's weird with me, 23 everywhere for some reason, 23. Well, that's, that's a five, and so there's change. You know, that's a change number. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Three months from now, let's see, what is that going to be? Like October. Yeah. You might even feel like a, like it slows down, almost like Mercury retrograde-ish. But take advantage of that time. It's okay. almost going to be like a little mini vacation from from chaos. Do you feel chaos? I well, you know, yeah, I have, but I feel like what you're saying. I feel like it's slowing down a little bit. I know that time is speeding up, but I feel like I'm more in the now moment than I've ever been. You know what I mean? Even yeah. though time is speeding up, I feel like I'm more in that now moment in each now moment. It's actually like I can almost control the t- length of it. It's kind of hard to explain, but that yeah, really you know, time is expanding. So to me, that's almost like a hammock. You know. We're able to kind of lay back and swing a little bit because although time seems like it's speeding up, we actually have more of it because there is no time for one thing. And we're realizing that. We're zero time right now. Exactly. Okay. That really ties it together for me right there. Thank you for articulating that. That, Wow. You're welcome. All right. So do do you have a question about what I've said so far? No, I don't. You know, it, it, everything you said really resonates with me, and I'm just going to keep trying to do the best I can in every, you know, now moment, and I'm really excited about the future, and I, I, I can't wait, you know, I can't wait to see how it goes. Thank you so much, Cindy. Wow. You're welcome, Larry. 
Awesome. Awesome, definitely. So, so is that... Are we done with that, or is there something else that, that you want to move, keep keep going on that, Cindy, or Larry, Larry do you have any done? questions? Do you want me you to know? I, I really don't, unless there's something else that really stands out to you. I think that you really helped me a lot right there and answered yeah. a lot. I mean, unless there's something else that really just stands out to you. I think, yeah, Michelle, that was great. I'm just kind of speechless right now and in awe. Let me just give Aww. you one final message that I'm getting for you, Larry. Okay. You know, walk a couple steps and stop and enjoy your environment. You don't have to be anywhere at any time. Just be yourself and keep walking forward and just have your arms open ready to receive because it's coming. Okay, and I'll just do wow. that with you. Yeah. Wow. That's beautiful. Amazing. Yeah, I, I think I'm ready to, yeah, continue on, Michelle. I'm just, wow, I'm letting that sink in That's for great. sure. Well, great. Well, thank you for doing that, Cindy. Yeah. Um, You're welcome. She's, she, she was pretty spot on, huh, Larry? Yeah, I exactly spot on. And the way she articulated it, too, it just really resonated with me in a way that I can't even describe it. Yeah, I, I can't even exaggerate how spot on she was. Well, I have something to share. Um, and it just popped into my mind as to what just happened here. And, and as far as, um, you know, when sometimes you go to see psychic mediums um, in big crowds like John Holland or, um, uh, you know, the, you know any of the big, the big events that you go to, a spirit seems to get together on the other side and bring forth messages that happen to um, help other people heal as well, like, all of the, you know, the children who had died um, and left their parents here on the planet kind of kind of got together behind the scenes and, and said, okay, talk about this, this, and this, and that's going to help other people think about their children and heal while they're there. And, and you know, the angels always come in during these, these, uh, um, these, these events and, and help people with that healing. Well, the reason I believe that um, Cindy got your grandmother's middle name it's because that's what my grandmother's middle name was, too, oh. Marie. <laughs> wow. More synchronicity. So, it just keeps going. Yeah. Huh? It's, it's abs- yeah. So there's, there might be somebody out there in the audience who had a grandmother whose middle name was Marie. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, how about we take a caller now? Are you up for that, Cindy? Sure. Okay, great. We have area code 917 what is your name? Welcome to the Cosmic Awakening Show. Hi, thanks for the welcome. Um, my name is Ellen. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Ellen. How are you? Terrific, and I'm very impressed by your reading. Um, okay. My question has to do with a career change. Maybe can you give me advice on what would be the next best step for me? Sure. Okay, so are you in the food industry at all? No, never was, never. Okay. No. All right, so I don't know if this is about nourishment or nur- nurturing even, but let me just get a, have a look at this career. So has it been three years since something changed in your for your career, three years or three months? You no, know, a big change two years ago, but not three. No. Okay. So are you interested in promoting or getting another job? Um, another job. Okay. Because, you know, if you stayed where you are, things might shift a little bit, but I don't know if they would shift enough to keep your interest. Are you losing interest in this? It's almost like yeah. you're being pushed out of it in a way. Well, I, I do feel it's time to move on. There is not really room for growth, um, and I don't think I'm compensated enough for what I'm doing. And I, I feel it's time to stretch my talents and move on. Okay. So this is a five-year cycle that you're probably a year into this five-year cycle. So I would say I don't think it's going to happen right away. Six, oh. Probably six to nine months. Ellen, mm. Mm. things yeah. can really start shifting. But keep your eyes open now. Looks like you're going to have two or three different options. 
but really, really check them over well. Two of them probably wouldn't be, you probably know right off the bat, though. You don't want to relocate, do you? I wouldn't mind. I thought about it, yes. Okay, because this one I'm looking at looks like it's distant from where you are now. So I don't know if that could be what you consider distant, like 50 miles or 500 miles, but it is distant. Okay. Is uh, uh, The place I'm thinking of would be um, pretty far, more like 1,000 or 1,500 miles. Okay. Are you alone? Would you be going there alone? Uh, well, my cats are welcome to come with me. Who? My cat. Oh, okay. <laughs> but no humans, because I don't see any humans going there with you. No, that was, that's fine. I'm single. Okay. But once you get there, you've been doing what you're doing for a long time, haven't you? What do you do? Um, do you want to say? Um, I'm a grant writer development officer. Okay. For for a nonprofit, and I've only been doing that for a couple of years. I had a different career before that. Okay. Because it just seems like either you're a natural at it, or you get promoted, or you get it opens up for you fast. As if though you I did have experience. Move. I'm sorry. Go ahead. If I make that move, it opens up paths for me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm, uh, it came to my mind a few months ago, maybe that is the best next step for me, is to really look into um, this move. Yeah, I think it would be good for you. Are you moving to where there's more water? Because I see water around this. That wasn't in my mind. No, it would be actually, I was thinking of the Denver area, and that's quite dry. Oh, wow. It's mountain and dry. Yeah. I don't know. Do you live near water now? Yes, and we're right now having a big rainstorm. Oh, okay. That explains water. Um, I wouldn't, you know, I would still check your other options and make sure the Denver move is the one that you really, really want. Like I said, you're going to have some choices. Just weigh them out carefully. I don't know if you're prone to making decisions and regretting them later. No, I don't think so. Okay, good. But still, I'm being told that you should weigh them out. Okay. And it seems like I've taken a lot of your time. Thank you. I really appreciate it. (laughs) No, that's perfectly fine, Ellen. So We're so glad to serve, and um, I hope that helps you on your journey. It does. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ellen. Much love to you, Ellen. Have a good night, sweetie. You too. So, Larry, um, do you remember the last psychic show we had? Yes. The theme was for the night. (laughs) <laughs> it was water. <laughs> yes, it was, absolutely. Yeah, lots water of synchronicities going everywhere. on that night. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Big time. So, yeah, that's funny. Well, that was really cool. Um, I have another caller here if we could just keep going. Okay. Um, this is um, welcome to the show, Silver Zone. Sil- Hi. Silver Zone. <laughs> it's Rachel. Hi, Hi Rachel. Rachel. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good, how are you? I'm good, I'm thoroughly enjoying the show tonight. It's like I've finally found people who are my people. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, <laughs> um, career. That's, that's all I'm focused on at the moment because I need to make some major moves, but yeah, I'm looking for a little direction. Did you say career? Yes. Okay. All right, let's see. You know, I'm kind of getting that. Are you are you actively working right now? No. No? Okay. Hmm. It's like, you know, it's almost like you're dragging your feet a little bit, and, you know, things are slow coming. 
I think you maybe should set some intentions. Do you know what you want to do? Um, I, I do know what I want to do. And okay. I've been encouraged towards doing it, but there's still a little bit of um, maybe fear and resistance to moving right. forward with it. Now, is this, um, would this be in an office with different people? Um, I have, it, 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 actually, yeah, there is a possibility of that. Okay. And I think that might be what's kind of um, making you hesitant about it. Yeah, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. I see five people in this place coming up. It's in your future. There's five people, yourself included. Mm -hmm. And I see you as sort of being like the third one, which tells me that maybe you're older than two other people or you have more experience. Okay. So that kind of puts you in the middle. That's interesting. A lot of threes coming up tonight. Yeah, so, threes, a, threes a specific number with me as well. I get it all the time. <laughs> so you're you're like the the middle child if you if you went to this place in this office. But I see you being highly respected there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you see um, like in in what field? You know, does this have anything to do with medical or medical billing, insurance, anything like that? Um, well, funny you say that. Something was suggested to me a few days ago, but I'm not really a doctor's receptionist. You know, I, I'm, I'm sort of, I do the whole spiritual side of stuff, and I don't like sick people. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> been to a doctor in seven years. Well, but you know, they had that glass. <laughs> But, Rachel, you know what? I see you You have a lot of light. You're a good person. You have a big heart, and you just beam light. And maybe that's where you should be. I mean, you should consider that anyway because, you know, who likes to go to the doctor or whatever, but people will remember you. You will even I, yeah. possibly make them feel better just by being who you are. Have you been I, I on your spiritual path for a long time? <laughs> since I was since I was a kid, I've always seen spirit. I've I've been taught by spirit. I mean, all these things that are coming up, the awakening, the ascending. I, I I'm listening to people's stories. I'm going, oh my god, I've been through that. I've seen that. I've experienced that. And I, I was thinking, I can't tell anyone this because they're gonna think I'm crazy. <laughs> well. You might consider it, I mean, I wouldn't advise anybody to do something that they don't like to do, but I think mm -hmm. you could bring light to this office. Is it pediatrics by any chance? Um, I, I, I don't know. I think, it's a, I think it's a general surgery. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. that sounds great, Rachel. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Can you hear my Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah I, I hope that helps you on your career path. You know, this... The times that we're in, the, there's less and less jobs that seem to be available, but um, I know that spirit always guides us to be in the right place, and it, it's really nice to have somebody like Cindy to help us uh, make that choice with uh, with some, you know, knowing that, with some good knowing is the way to put that. So, yeah, it thanks is. a lot for calling. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Bye. <laughs> So, Larry, it looks like we have another um, a another uh, three theme tonight. Um, you know, I see th three thirty three. I see threes a lot. You know, um, three threes make up creation. You know, the the, the Trinity. You yeah, with I, Larry. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, exactly. The three, it just seems like the synchronicities just keep picking up. I mean, mm -hmm. especially, you know, we talk about it often, and, you know, every time that we turn around, we get more proof of it. I mean, you know, it mm -hmm. couldn't be any more clear if a brick fell on our head and hit us, you know. It's, I know. It's incredible. I know. But, That's why I had to bring it up, because it, it does, yeah. does seem yeah, I know when we first met on Facebook, there were a lot of synchronicities, and three had a lot to do with that. But speaking of threes, have a, a caller on the line here, area code 863. Hi, what's your name? 
Greg. <laughs> Welcome to the Cosmic Awakening Show, Greg. <laughs> hey, Greg. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. I'm, 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 feel, I'm feeling that Oneana energy. <laughs> Are you? I'm putting it out there for you, Greg. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'll be up there in August and probably October, so I'll be getting a full reading from you. But what I, my question is right now, and it's not really for me. My daughter's up there, uh, Brittany, and it's kind of for her. Do you see her working with me on Inside B at any time in in the near future? What was her name again? Brittany. Brittany, yes. Mm-hmm. Is she twenty two? Uh, she turns 21 in uh, okay. July. Okay. So when you were asking that, Greg, 22 lit up for me. So I'm feeling that that's maybe in a year. Hmm. Nice. Is nice. She, that's your number. Huh? Yeah. Is she in school right now? Uh, no, she uh, she went to school. It didn't work out well for her, and now she's really trying to find her way. She's kind of... Um, hit the dark night of the soul period and she she knows that she always has an open door here she can always work for me but I'm not pressuring her into anything just kind of hoping that she does but um, you know I'm trying to allow her to follow her life path whatever that might be right so I would call that she's in school <laughs> she's in <laughs> yeah, the school, school or now. whatever but no the reason I was asking that because she's really learning a lot right now Mm-hmm. And she's she's on, boy, this girl, she's got one foot on one side of the fence and one on the other. She's like, she walks in two dimensions. You know, she, she gets it so uh, spiritually and metaphysically, but yet I, I think she's still kind of influenced by her friends um, a little to step into her spiritual side a little bit more. She was down here for the drum circle, and she met uh, one of my friends, uh, Chelsea, who was about her age, and uh, Chelsea's friend, Julie, and uh, they hit it off like they were long uh, friends for forever, and she knows that she has people her age down here. Right. She instant friends with, so I think that's lurking in the back of her mind, but um, also, you know, like I said, I do want her to follow up her own path, and I, I need to respect that. I can't force her to do anything. So, right. But I was just curious about what her life path might be, and uh, if it does have have something to do working with me, hopefully, in whatever facet she wants. But I, I'm thinking, I know she said that she was interested in doing past life regression, and Michelle and I were are probably going to be taking that class probably next week uh, on past life regression. And uh, hopefully maybe she would be uh, interested in doing that too. But whatever she decides, that, that's up to her. But I would love for her to join us. Yeah, and you know, Greg, I think she will. She just has to get over this. You know how sometimes I'll just I'm getting this analogy. You know, we have a, a bag of cookies, and they all taste good, but one tastes bad, next one tastes bad, but we keep eating them, even though they taste bad. We know there's a good one coming. Mm-hmm. She's just eating bad cookies right now. Mm. I know that, that sounds crazy, sense. but yeah. But that's all right. She'll she'll have a new preference when the, when she's through with this. That's the point. She'll have a new preference. She'll know how to choose what she wants and what she doesn't want into her life. You should have her come see me sometime. I would love to chat with her. If I was just thinking about that. When I come up in I, either August or October, I'll be in for a reading and I'll bring her in for one as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. And even if she wanted to stop in and say hi now, sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, if I'm not doing anything, I love to talk. Okay. Very good. I appreciate that. Thanks so much, sure. Andy. And thank you, Michelle and Larry, for getting my call in. And, hey, Greg, how do you thank pronounce you, that Greg. city again? <laughs> how do you well, it's called Oneonta, but the, the local, it's a silent T, so it's more Oneonta. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I knew I butchered it. Okay. <laughs> and our, we, Thanks, we pronounce Greg. our A's and O's differently. Awesome. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm starting to talk like you now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys have a great evening. I know you got a lot of callers ahead of you. So uh, thanks once again for getting me on. And thank you, Cindy. Thanks, Craig. All right. Much love, brother. Take care now. Bye. Okay. 
Okay, that was that was pretty cool. Let's move right along before we wear Cindy out too much. Here to area code four zero four. Welcome to the Cosmic Awakening Show. What is your name, please? Uh, I'm Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan. How are you? We're doing great. Thank you. Did you have a question that Cindy can help you with tonight? This is my first time ever doing this. So, Woo-hoo. well, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, life. I am in a. I, I don't know where I am at in life, but I am somewhere, and I just need some direction. I would like some direction. And I've never done this because um, religiously I was told that this is very wrong and very bad, but I am crushing my fear in every area of my life, so figured why not. Okay, Jonathan. Um, you know, you're like in the throes of an awakening. I, you're questioning things, and you're not liking the answers that you're receiving. Is that true? You, you said I'm not what? You don't like the answers. They're not resonating with you. You want more. I, yeah, I don't know what the answers that I'm getting are. I'm just, okay. I, I feel, I feel, uh, I guess the word, the correct word is lost or confused. Okay. And I, I have a direction. I feel like I'm, I have a direction, but I just don't know if the direction is, is, is accurate or if I need more insight or... Um, but you are right. You are correct about the awakening. I am in the in the throes of a very uh, uh, significant awakening that is different from everything that I've ever been taught in my life. Okay. So, you know, the messages that I'm getting for you, Jonathan, are relating to letting your arms down to your side and just relax and allow so always be sure to surround yourself with some sort of protection, too, even if it's the intention not to let anything come into your energy field that isn't from the light. It can just simply, it can be that simple. But I see that you have opportunities and information, new friends coming into your life, but you kind of have your arms up to almost block it. And that's that's very typical because... You know, when we start moving through life, you get into the awakening part of it, it kind of gets fast, and we kind of put our hands up almost like if we're in a windstorm, and we put your, our hands up to, to stop some things. But okay. it's okay for you to relax and, and enjoy it and just allow things to come to you. I see a five around this. Did something... Um, Specific happened five months ago for you, Jonathan. Um, what month was five months ago? That would have been February. February. Oh wow. Um, I don't know. Um, I will say this. I will tell you this. Uh, I am a musician. Um, I was raised in a very strict sect of the Pentecostal church. Um, I live very far away from most of my family. Um, and I recently transitioned out of a full-time job that I was miserable doing into being a full-time musician, which has, it's, it's nice, but it hasn't financially done what I'd like it to do, and as I'm awakening, I am pulling myself out of the financial system because I can sense how evil it is, Um, so it's not like I'm trying to get rich, I'm just trying to, I don't know if the word is assimilate into peaceful culture and not take advantage of people and not um, be abusive or selfish, I'm trying to be a selfless person, Um, and so I'm learning about meditating and that kind of thing, but... I don't know what I'm doing as it relates to that because I've been, it's been forced into my mind to kind of like meditate on things like the Bible or meditate on Jesus. And that's a whole other conversation. Um, so I, 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 those things, I just celebrated my fifth wedding anniversary in October of last year. That's, there you go. That's the There's five. your five. 
Okay, thank you. And, you know, Jonathan, I know the banking system is corrupt in our government and so on, but, you know, everything, there's a gift in everything, and abundance and money is not bad. We just have to understand the energy of money. It's, it comes and it goes. It always, it's abundance. We don't have to go into detail of what we don't want to get into. We just go into detail of what we want out of that. So I think that's why Spirit's showing me, like with your arms down at your side, just by resisting what the bank system is, you're almost like denying yourself that flow of abundance. Do you know what I mean? I, 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 you, you just painted that very clear to me. I just saw that now. I just saw what you're saying because somebody else said that to me the other day that uh, I, I, I've been attempting to pull myself as far away from trying to get rich or trying to be wealthy because I don't want to be greedy or selfish and I want to help people and I want to, you know, I, I, I want to take care of my family. I want to do all the good things that people generally want to do. Uh, I guess it's my intention, but what I've been saying is that I don't want to get rich and I don't want to really have money in abundance because I, I, I guess I feel like it, it led people down such bad paths. But you're you're absolutely right. I, I do see that answer and I understand that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with being rich because that doesn't just mean money. But we do need money. There's no denying that. And and don't absolutely. feel guilty about that. That that guilt is not serving you at all. It's a very low vibration. Well, great, Jonathan. I um. I hope that's helped you uh, in your past. I, I, I it has, and I, I appreciate. It. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you. You're John. welcome, and congratulations for speaking your voice on the radio for the first yeah, time. Yeah, much love, Jonathan. You did great, man. Thank you. Good night, Jonathan. Good night. Well, yes. Um, you know, I just had. You know, Jonathan's call really helped me as well because um, I left the oil field industry last year um, when I uh, di- when I got a divorce, and it was it was really hard for me to be associated with the oil field industry anymore, knowing that uh, knowing where you know what they're doing to, to to the planet and how you know oil and money is controlling controlling everything right now. And it took me a while to heal the fact that I had even aligned myself with that before, you know, before we got married. When we got married, I was, wasn't really awake. And then I just had to realize to myself, you know, I needed that experience because I needed to give my light to those people who were working in the oil field industry because, bless their hearts, they're just being directly controlled. And, right. Um, and, you know, so for me to shed my light as much as I could until I just couldn't take it anymore, I de- definitely could understand why I needed to have that experience. But yeah, that um, when we do things that we enjoy, um, that seems to to bring more abundance. And um, when we just kind of let go and and let things happen, um, we seem to be able to bring in just enough money to be able to exist and if you're not bringing enough money into your life right now to be able to exist and be comfortable and you're doing what you enjoy then you really need to take a look at um, just that you know what is it that's blocking the money what kind of uh, understanding do you have about money uh, because it ha- it is an energy exchange as long as you understand that it's being used against us as um, a form of energy, when you get the understanding behind that and you let that flow through you and transmute it, then you can learn to accept it in um, a way that will benefit you more. So I love that, Michelle, okay. that you use the word transmute. Yeah. Because that, that is what we have to do. It's like St. Germain mm-hmm. and the Violet Flame. Transmute, mm-hmm. transmute, transmute. You know, these mm-hmm. things in life that a negative energy, a lower vibration, let's say, we can transmute it to a positive energy that serves thousands of more people. Mm-hmm. We just have to yes, take and it more... and, 
and flip it. Is all, that's my phrase. I always say just flip it. Yeah, that yeah, experience you, was vital for you, Michelle, definitely. To go through that, to yeah. work in the oil, yeah, it was vital for you and for thousands, possibly millions of people out there to help. So, yeah, I, I'm hoping that you don't feel bad about that anymore because it's really done wonders for you and a lot of people already. So I just wanted to add that yeah. in there, partner. Yeah. Yeah, I don't feel bad about it. I kind of miss that paycheck, but <laughs> 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 but oh well, you know, I'm happier now than I have been in my whole life. So I know yeah. that I'm doing something right. Oh, so let's awesome. take another caller uh, so we don't keep Cindy up, you know, too late. Cause, um, yeah, said, we've got a bunch of them such, too. I know she's just providing such a good service, um, and you know we're doing this so we can. You know, maybe somebody's going to hear something that's going to help them. But as well, you know, we're you know, Cindy does take appointments on her website, um, essentialawakenings.com. dot com. So here we go. Area code seven one five. Welcome to the Cosmic Awakening Show. Good evening, Michelle. Hi, Larry. You guys have got a great show going again tonight. This is Kevin. Hey, Kevin, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing good tonight. Cindy, thank you for the information you've been passing on. It's very helpful. Oh, thank you, Kevin. You're welcome. Do you have a question, Kevin? Uh, Yeah, I'm wondering. I know I've still got blocks there going. I'm trying to get out full blown or blown on my path, and I'm wondering what blocks I might have that I might be missing. You know, as as you're talking, Kevin, I see, like, it's almost like you're trying to walk several paths. You know, do you resonate with that? Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, I do. So, you know, you have more on your plate than you need. So there's a lot of things that you're thinking about, dealing with, worrying about that that don't belong to you. So that in itself is an obstacle. Do you have children? No, I don't. Okay. Because I see, like, responsibility, but it was kind of leaning towards, like, of family. Oh, uh, yeah, with my family I do. Um, my younger brother and I help each other out, so okay. he's right now taking care of uh, doing the helping me out on this end. So. Oh, that's good. You help each other. Okay, so there's a few things in your path. One of them um, seems like it has something to do with education. I don't know if this could even be a student loan or classes. Do you take classes or anything? No, uh, I don't. Uh, in fact, I haven't even done any college. Um, okay. My main pursuit for the last 20 years has been kind of following where Spirit led me to use uh, unfold things to the next level. Okay. So the classes, I mean, we can just categorize that as learning. Whatever, you know, educational doesn't have to be the education system. Well, as it, far as life goes, yeah, I'm going through a lot of different things right now. So, But okay. I figure it's soul growth. Yeah. But you ha- um, I just see there's some things, Kevin, that you can put on the back burner, so to speak. So let's see. You know, and for some reason I see a chair. Like, are you sitting still, do you feel? Um, Yeah, right at the moment. Okay. So, okay. So let me just get a better view of this. Here's the deal. Seven months from now, what month is that going to be? It's going to be like March, right? Mm-hmm. Big changes happening there. And I like that. Oh, my gosh. So March is the third month. Hello. Okay. Yeah. March is a big month of change, too. So in these next seven months, you're going to be taking some things out of your path that really aren't yours. They don't belong to you. So whether they're somebody else's problems that you feel you have the experience with, you're kind of holding on to things that aren't yours. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I think so. Here's what it is. When we do that, 
when we have a friend who's going through something and we've gone through it and we think about it, it takes us right back to our stuff that we have moved past but maybe haven't released all of it. But what it does, Kevin, is it takes your power. So that's why I see all these branches like in your path. You tend to, apparently, you tend to give away your power. So we're just going to ask you to hold on to some of that, to empower yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. I do a lot of helping of people, talking to them. I do a lot of energy work, you know, whether they're aware of it or not. So, Yeah. Well, they need to be aware of it for one thing. Otherwise, you're really giving your power out to you don't even know where. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You want them to know it and that you want them to receive it. Otherwise, you're just spinning your energy out there. Okay. So That makes sense. And it's great to want to help people. Don't lose that. That's your passion. Mm -hmm. But things aren't happening quite fast enough for you. Are you being a little impatient? I have been impatient since I woke up to my path. I've been wanting to, you know, get to these times and get to it. So. Yeah, and you will, but it's really important to ground yourself and set some priorities for yourself. Boundaries are huge with you, Kevin. It's like I don't think you have any, which is kind of typical. We need to realize we have to have boundaries. It's like, will you do this? No, nope, that's one of the things I don't do. And and don't be afraid to say that to people. Okay. Because you have to build, you have to reserve your energy and use it in the best that serves you so you can serve others. That's your key right there. Serve yourself first so you can serve others. Okay. Well, thank that's, you very much. That's great. Yeah, You're Kevin, welcome. thank you for, for your uh, question because, you know, you've helped a lot of other people because it's very good advice for anybody out there. Um, to ground yourself and um, as you, you know, where you put your energy, um, even though we have infinite connection to energy, you know, if we're just spinning it out, it's like we're just sending sparks out and um, what we need is to stay grounded and have a balanced flow through our bodies rather than just, you know, spitting energy here and there. It's kind of like a spark plug that's out on your engine of your car. Mm-hmm. I okay. understand that. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you, Kevin, so much. You have a good night now. You too. You too. Awesomeness. Let's keep going. I want to help as many people as possible. Larry, are you? can you see the switchboard? I can. I'm actually on the switchboard right now. I want to speak um, to somebody. Yeah, why don't we go ahead and go to area code 504. Let me see. Hi, thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. 504, Thanks. are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. can what is your name? Hello. Hello. Oh, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Great. Sorry. Um, my name is Debbie from Louisiana. Hi, Debbie. Ooh, hi, Debbie. <laughs> hi. So you didn't, fall, sounds- you didn't fall into the sinkhole, huh? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. I have a new phone, and I'm not working. It's so good. Like, sometimes it's on mute, and then sometimes I don't know how it jumps there itself. And I've been going on speaker because I've been listening. I was in my car, and I got to where I was going to go, but I couldn't stop listening. So I kept putting it back on speaker <laughs> in, a, in a public place. I feel like I'm getting a good lesson. Oh, good. Well, did you have a question for Cindy that she can help Yeah. You? Hi, I was wondering if you could help me with a block. I feel um, like a sadness that that keeps flaring up occasionally, even though I'm an optimistic person. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you see anything with that. Okay. Let me look around you and see what's, you know, and I do see it. Like if I see your energy moving in a circle, there's a glitch somewhere. Um. Debbie, do you have pain in your shoulders? Yes. Like just stiff shoulders all the time. Okay. So it's like something is obviously weighing on you. Um, are you are you stressed out? Yes. Okay. 
does this have, um, are you stressed out because of the mail? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Go <laughs> <laughs> thank you, right? That was tough. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> That's funny, Cindy. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so this is what I'm feeling, Debbie. Are you connected to this person because you thought they would complete you? Uh, uh, no, but I didn't think I would be giving so much. With, I don't feel like I'm getting much in return. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's kind of like this isn't what you signed up for. Yeah. You kind of wanted think- would rather receive. A little bit would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, so. I, don't, I don't expect a person to treat me like, you know, like, you know, I'm very independent, but just something would be nice. Yeah. So, you know, oh, my gosh, so this message, and I don't mean to sound, this might be rude, but this is a message a- I got. You dialed and got the wrong number. Ew, okay. Does that make sense to you? Um, sort did of. This, did this I'll relationship it. start on... It, it is a relationship, right? This is a... Yes, okay. yes. Um, it's almost like it started by force. Um, I use the word force loosely. This wasn't okay. like love at first sight or anything like that, was it? Uh, no, but then it did turn to that. Okay. All right. I'm feeling that more is expected of you than you're willing to do because the expectation was off. Okay. So here's the thing. Is this two or three years? Is this how long this has been going on, your relationship? Has? Six. Six <laughs> years? Okay. Yeah. It's going to be shifting, that's for sure, because you're okay. halfway through a cycle with this. And you know what? Debbie, you can really, you could make this relationship work if you choose. Okay, I know that too, but I feel like I'm failing because I have, like the caller before me, really bad boundaries. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm trying, but I don't feel like I'm communicating it right. Because when I initially got in the relationship, he needed a lot of help and I didn't mind because he had a mother that had Alzheimer's, dementia, and I, you know, didn't mind offering that lifeline, but she's gone now, and it's like I'm still offering it, and I'm the one that feels like I'm going down, and he's not shifting, but I feel I am. Yeah. Well, the relationship was built on you giving. Right. So it is just a matter of you not giving. You mean have a boundary there, like I give this much and that's it. Okay. Um, Debbie, I'd, I'd like to interject something. Um, yeah, A lot okay. of times uh, we have relationships as to serve mirrors for ourselves. And so what I'm feeling like is now would be a good time to really start uh, concentrating on loving yourself. And um, okay. when we love ourselves and when we can uh, respect ourselves and, and, you know, recognize who we are, um, that is usually can correct things in our life and it becomes very clear if this person that we're with um, is is uh, now matching our increased vibration from loving ourselves or then it becomes very clear as to whether it's time for them to move on. So why don't you start with yourself first because anytime we have a problem with a relationship, it's a mirror of something that we need to look at for ourselves. Okay. That's true. Okay. Uh, in what what ways um, can I make my boundaries stronger? Well, by deciding what you want 
or what you don't want? Do you mean how to actually do it? Yeah. Well, you have to decide what it is first and feel safe with it before okay. you can share it and say, this, this is something new that I'm doing and end a story. Sometimes we feel like when we talk to other people that we have to justify it or explain ourselves. And we don't. We can just say, this is the way it is. I love you, and this is, this is something that I want us to do. End of story. Okay. Yes, we need to stand in our power, Debbie. Stand in our power. Okay. And not try to please everybody else. We've got to take this time now to work on ourselves. Great. Okay. I hope that, is, hope that helps you out. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for welcome. calling in, Debbie. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'll keep listening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. And, and, Michelle, we still got more. We still got a lot of callers on the line. Should we take another one? Yeah. I'm good. Um, yeah, let's do it. Cool. Go for it, okay, Larry. Okay. Let's, let's see. We've got area code 661. Or No, I hit the wrong one there. Go ahead and take that one, Larry. Harmony Go ahead and of take being. that one. Harmony of yeah. being. Okay. Harmony of being. Are you there? No. Try that. Harm- Hi, yeah, Harmony, Harmony of, of being. being. Are you with us? Harmony, Harmony of, of being. being. Are you there? Guess what, Larry? Hey, guess what? We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go to six six one here. Area code area code six six one. Are you there? Area code six six one. Hello, area code six six one. Are you there? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, I think we're gonna have to go to area code two o eight. Area code two o eight. Are you there? Never again. It makes a big old faster. Area code 208? Still on the clock, right? Area code 208. We can hear you. You're you're live on the Cosmic Awakening. Okay. Let's go ahead then, and we're going to go ahead and go to... 727. Let's go ahead and go to area code 301. Area code 301, are you there? Larry, hold on just a second. I think, did you, um, did you mute the last caller? Yeah, yes, now, yeah, now I, I did. we're still I, hearing that. We're still hearing that? Okay, I've got them. Yeah. The only one I've got up right now is area code 301. I'm, area code 301? No, wait a minute. Hold on. Sorry, Michelle. Hmm. Okay. Let me try. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Technical difficulties. This is funny. I know. Yeah. Okay. Let me look at the control panel here. See where I... And I think you're right. I think there's no one live right now. So let's try to scroll down to... Area code 661, welcome to the Cosmic Awakening Show. <laughs> Area code 661. Uh, 661. Area code 661, you're live on the Cosmic Awakening Show. Going on. We, we may have a problem with our switchboard, Larry. And you know what? My trying, lights I'm, are flickering here. Yeah, I'm going Your up and down and seeing if we have. Yeah. That's very strange. It is. That is so, really odd well, because everybody's on hold. There's nobody else. It's only showing yeah. myself and Cindy is on. What if we tried, what if we were to try area code, um, let's try area code 518. Area code 518, are you there? Yes, yes. Yay. Oh, oh my goodness. What? I How have are to you? say, Area Code 518 apparently was 
about 10 minutes left in the show for Cindy. Apparently, you really needed to have a reading tonight. What is your name? Yeah, that's so funny. I'm Andrea from Saranac Lake, New York. <laughs> Welcome, Andrea. Andrea. How are Hi, you? Andrea. Yay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, well, I just got huge chills when you told me your name. So um, uh, go ahead and, and ask Cindy your question, and let's see um, how we can help you. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Wonderful. Hi, Cindy. Hi. <laughs> um, I have been wanting to know for a very long time what my planetary origin and species is. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, no wonder. It was so important. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder why it's so flickering here. <laughs> okay. Um well, the first thing that came up was Arcturian. Do you know about the Arcturians? I have heard of them, yes. You know, do you live in the country? Yes. And do you see craft at night? Do you see spacecrafts? Uh, I've I've only seen one, a really big, big one that was low, right above the tree line. That was a few years ago. Okay. Because I, um, I think you have some, you get visited, not, and there's no fear attached to this. So I hope you don't feel fear from it. I used to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't, though, because... Um, I'm really picking up strong Arcturian energy for you, and it's very sweet and kind, very lovable. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, I have to agree, too. This is kind of my thing, too. I agree. I am, too. I would agree with Cindy on that very much. I feel that. I have a very strong affinity for the Arcturians, and um, some of them... um, They're, you know, some of them are like from the seventh, a seventh vibrational dimensional um, frequency, and um, you know, they Arcturians have a lot of knowledge to impart to us, but they also do have uh, the love energy, like the Pleiadians. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Mm. Wow, that's well, great. cool. Yeah. Congratulations for knowing your um, galactic heritage. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Have a a good evening, Andrea. Yes, you all do the same. Thank you. Much love to you, Andrea. Thank you for calling in. Love you guys. Good night. Aw. Okay, um, we we have time for one more. Would you be willing to take one more call? Sure. Cindy, okay. Um, And, of course, okay, there's my switchboard popping up. Now I'm having trouble with the switchboard. Okay, let's try area code 732. Area code 732, are you there? Hi, yes. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm a little, uh, I didn't didn't think I was going to get picked. I'm really excited. Um, My name is Jessica. Well, welcome, Jessica, and... You had a question for Cindy? Um, I, I, I have many questions, but um, I guess mainly what I would love to help with is um, some insight on my main challenge is um, health. Okay. You can give me some insight. Sure. Okay, so... Um are there, do you have several health concerns? Yeah, I just, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I just see a few. I shouldn't say several. That makes it sound big. But, um, you know, I think, Jessica, a lot of them might be caused by by you not processing life. So do you get overwhelmed with life? <laughs> yes. Um, recently, I've been told I'm empathic and a sensitive and psychic, and just so yes, information stimuli. I think everything overwhelms me. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah, and so your body is reacting to that. But, you know, that will start smoothing out, too. Here's You're another person that needs to take some things out of their life that don't actually belong to you. Do you have a younger sister that you care for or somebody no. younger? No. Okay. Seems like you're taking on... Um, taking on energy of somebody who's younger than you. It's like a female energy. Hmm. I really don't have many people in my life right now. I, I can't think of who that could be. Okay. Well, and I could be off a little bit. It, maybe it's not female. Or maybe you're not, maybe you're doing it, not being conscious of it. Okay. Huh. Yeah, you do have a lot of energy swirling around you. You know what? Do you ground yourself? Um, I've been putting in more effort to do that, like, um, you know, going, walk, I take off my shoes a lot, I walk on the grass more, I go to the park as much as possible, but... Um, That's good. And you can even drink herbal tea. You can, you know, like wash your hands, take a nice Epsom salt bath. That actually yeah. would be really good for you. Do you have muscle aches? Um, yes. I, I, yes. It's like, I guess you could say something like fibromyalgia. I mean, right. I have a lot of health, I have a lot of health stuff. I, I mean, I have a lot. I mean, I have digestive well, issues, so I feel like that kind of creates the rest. <laughs> yeah. It's overwhelming. So... Can you, do you have, can you take baths? Yes, uh uh-huh, I have a bathtub. Yep, so, and you know what Epsom salts is? I do, actually, I've been doing um, a flotation tank as of recently. Awesome. (laughs) To help me, um, you know what that is, of course, I've been doing that to help me um, rest because I've been under a lot of stress. Yeah. You know what? This happens to so many people when we get overwhelmed. Everything gets exaggerated, and things just seem bigger than they really are. And so I'm just I'm being asked to tell you that you are not broken. Do you feel broken? Do you feel like there's something wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah, honey, you're not broken. So there's nothing to really fix. There's things to overcome, but there's nothing wrong. It's just a period of transition that's not very comfortable, but you'll move through it. Well, I, I, just, I mean, that was kind of one of my other questions is, like, that, that's what I wanted to hear. It's like I've been going through this for, like, 10 years, and I just, I just, and I just I want to hear that something is going to finally shift for me. I've just been depressed every day and just struggling with money and, you know. So you know I what just, I tell clients, and it's probably not usually the best thing to say, and I do it myself. When I get a little overwhelmed, too, I'll say, so what? I don't care. <laughs> and it really kind of takes you off the hook for a little while, but then you realize I really don't care about that. Why am I even entertaining that? Why do I even put up with it? I don't care. It's okay not to care about things that aren't yours. That's great advice. That's amazing advice. Um, and I know I'm taking up a lot of time, but, I mean, my, my other major thing is just being really unhappy in my work. I'm like, just miserable. Like, do you see that changing at all? Well, you have to make that decision. This is almost like, I don't usually like to say test, but it's almost like, well, let's just call it a challenge. These are about choices, Jessica. Everything, you have choices. You're just not making them. So make up your mind and choose what you want to do. Choose how you want to feel. Choose who you want in your life. And all these things are going to empower you. And that's, that's what's needed. You need to be empowered. You'll find your passion. 
it's just covered up right now. But okay. you'll find it. You're okay. Thanks. You really are okay. You just need and to Jessica? keep walking. Don't stop. Jessica, we're we're sending you some healing energies as well, and uh, you know, give a little bit of love to yourself and have some faith and confidence in yourself. You're going to be just fine. Definitely. Thank you. I really appreciate your time and talking with me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Much love to you, Jessica. Definitely, lots of loving energy coming your way. Thank you for calling in. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Bless you. Bye. Uh, and, All you know, right. I think she was caller number nine. <laughs> three. Three, three, three. That's so wow. cool. Wow. What a way, Cindy, what a way to end go. it. We're going to let you go for the evening, and I just can't um, express in words my gratitude for you being here tonight and helping so many people. And um, if they want to book a session with you, could you let, let our callers know um, the, the method to do that? Yeah, you can email me at cindy at essentialawakenings.com or you can go to my website and um, click on contact me, the pink button on the left side, and send me a little note. Perfect. And my phone number is also on there somewhere, too. Cindy, thank you so much. I really can't thank you enough for that for that um, reading earlier. Just wonderful. I'm oh, you're welcome. Thank and, you. and thank you guys so much. This was awesome. Well, be prepared yeah. for your phone to start ringing off the hook. I know that you have very reasonable rates, and apparently I have you on the show so I can let people know that you're available to serve. And thank you so much. Have a great evening. Okay. Y'all too. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Wow, Larry. This yeah. Is, I, love, I love this show. I love having oh, this I show do too. with you. And I love um I love helping people. And you know, you know, our last caller, she had so much pain in her heart and a lot of us are going through, you know, just some really tough times. Thank God Mercury's out of retrograde. But Oh, you know, that Mercury, was a yeah, that was a monster. <laughs> Mercury, you know, when Mercury comes, goes into retrograde, you know, you don't want to make any plans or start any, um, no. sign any contracts or do anything like that. But now it's, it just feels like that things have lifted since uh, the 1st of July and, and we're able to move forward. And I just want to let everybody know out there, just keep putting one foot in front of the other. And just as long as you, when you go to bed at night, you know, you think to yourself, you know, I've just done the best that I could do today. And if you do your if you do your best and try your hardest, then that's just really all you can do at this point. And just know and have faith in yourself that um, uh, is, everything is going to work out in the end. We're on the earth is raising her vibration, and we are on. We we chose to come here and have this um, this experience, whether it be to help other people or whether it be to, to go to earth school and to, you know, to, um, to have just a different experience and just look at things from a higher perspective and run things through your heart and try not to think about things too much. We tend to overthink when we need to actually be in our hearts. So, and this is something that I talk about in my sessions as a holistic holistic life coach and I'm open to to taking sessions. I specialize in spirituality, relationships, um, health, life purpose, um, and mu- and uh, I like to help musicians out as well. And you can you can reach me um, by uh, my website www.michellewalling.com. And Larry, if you would if you wouldn't mind, could you remind our listeners um, how they can find you on Facebook and chat with you about different things like UFOs or the Pleiadians or, you know, that's how you're bringing soul family together. I'd be glad to, but I'd also like to give you a shout out as well. I think that with the retrograde passing and everything, if somebody needs some advice on some of those issues that Michelle talked about, I, I really think the time is right now and now is the perfect time to contact her and, 
you know, it, it would have really probably behoove a lot of people to do that. And, you know, I'm not trying to embarrass you or anything, but I know that, you know, you're a great soul and you really, you know, you help a lot of people just with your voice. And I can only imagine what you would do in a scenario like that. But anyway, yes, they can find me on Facebook at The Fringe Thinkers, not The French Thinkers, like Greg likes to call it, The Fringe Thinkers. Um, they can also find me as one of the admins at Leah Shapiro's Pleiadians Group. Um, I'm also, uh, I oversee about 22 different regional Pleiadian groups around the world, as well as Pleiadian Twin Flame Souls United and Pleiadian Reiki Masters and Beginners Healers. And that's about it. Um, you know, just you, they, they can see my strange bald head with the rainbow glowing off of me, all kinds of places <laughs> on Facebook, and um, Cosmic Awakening page as well um, for our show. And um, mm-hmm. Cosmic yeah. Awakening show for this show. Um, and next week's guest, um, I wanted to mention that real quick, is mm-hmm. philosopher and writer, writer William Mistel. Mistel, and I hope I'm saying his name right. It's M I S P, like mist. Mm-hmm. And then E L E, and I was fortunate right. enough to come across. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to get a mini, kind of a mini reading from him. He's not going to be giving readings. We're going to be talking um, about different things. But I got a mini reading from him where he tuned into my elemental makeup, meaning like uh, fairy and the gnome, yes. and he kind of took me into another realm and was able to identify my um, my uh, my elements. And um, that's a really important part of the of our growth is knowing uh, we have to have the four elements balanced. And you know, like we can come into our lives as a Sagittarian, which is a fire sign, but we also need to balance ourselves um, with certain amounts of the other elemental energies. Um, so I really like um, uh, what Bill had to say, and I'm uh, I'm excited to announce that my dear friend. And Greg's former Inside the Radio host, Kendra Gilbert, will also be joining us uh, to speak with Bill uh, because she's a huge fan of, of his work, and I know that she'll have some really good questions for him. I'm not oh, absolutely. that familiar. Absolutely. She brightens yeah. the room. Uh, yeah, it'll be great yeah. having her on. And I'm not that familiar with his work, but I know um, that there's that he has an important message uh, for humanity about the elementals, and so I really, um, I'm really grateful that she's going to help me out with that next week. So, yeah, keep looking. And we up won't even need an EMT or ayahuasca either, will we? <laughs> well, you know, I I feel like uh, you know fairies and unicorns and yes. gnomes and the element. I feel like every all of that it's real. It's real. It's just in another oh, definitely dimensional vibration and. You know, they're, they're holding the energy for the planet. They're holding the energy for us to be able to come into physical and to have this experience. So elementals are a really important part and, and we need to, to give them our gratitude as well. So. Yeah, I agree. And one last thing on them, I think as this veil continues to thin, I mean, those kind of, the elementals will become more and more visible as well. So, I mean, this is really the perfect time to have a show like this and I can't wait and have Kendra on there. It's, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Me too. And so keep li- looking up to the sky. It's currently raining in our sky, but stay, <laughs> stay centered and focused in your heart. And I want to send out my love to all of our listeners out there lot that are listening live and on the recording. And so with that, I'll bid you good night, Larry. Thank you so much. Thank you. Namaste, my sister. Mm-hmm.